Welcome back guys. So if you're wondering why I'm walking around with a big piece of a lattice, well today's video is going to be about tools that I wish that I'd found sooner or knew about as a beginner woodworker. As makers, we have a really bad habit of getting comfortable with the tools that we use and kind of lock into those or really don't search anything out or try something new. Well, at least that was the case for me for years and years. And then I slowly started letting some of these items into my life and realized why have I been doing this the hard way? So let me show you some items that I've found that will not only save you time, but in some cases, well, actually save your back. And the first item is going to be this panel carrier. This thing is awesome and I wish that I knew about it years and years ago. What they're intended for is that any type of panel that is large and cumbersome, just like this lattice, even though it's not that heavy, it's awkward. But where it really comes in handy and saves your back is plywood. Let's say three quarter inch solid cabinet grade plywood in a shop that you work in by yourself. Yeah, back in the old days, I would just be picking it up on my shoulders and walking at an angle and it would never fail that whenever I would set it down, I'd always damage the end somehow. But this little bad boy right here makes even carrying those super heavy awkward four by eight sheets a breeze so this thing is designed to just slide over the center of the panel that you're going to be carrying and when you lift up on the handle it closes the clamping device so stop breaking your back like i did trying to maneuver around heavy sheet goods pick you up one of these babies trust me you will not regret it while we're talking about heavy, awkward cheat goods, I wish that I had one of these panel carts years ago. So if you work by yourself, of course, you know that the heavy, awkward items like these cheat goods can be one of your biggest pains. You may have seen me use this cart in several videos, but I never really explained exactly what it was. It's actually a cart that is designed for moving cheat goods. You can just wheel this over to your garage door or even outside, back your truck up, and then just slide your material off onto it. And then once you had your plywood or whatever you're working with loaded onto the cart, you could actually work right off of this cart. Let's say that I needed on the opposite side of the shop and I need to maneuver this thing around equipment. You would just flip up these bottom stops and then there's a release switch on the back which will allow your material to balance and ride on its side. Now this almost feels like cheating. And then the cart is made to balance your material so that you can pretty much move it anywhere without straining your milk. Anyone else heard that old saying? And even though this cart is actually made for sheet goods, I use it for pretty much anything that is heavy. Like this old large mirror that weighs close to 75 pounds. Instead of awkwardly carrying it all over the place, bumping everything thing that I see. I can throw it on here, angle it down, and it's ready to rock. Okay, so this next one is actually one of my favorites. So you all probably have impact drivers by now and can't live without them. But what I found out is that not all impact drivers are the same. So this is the one that comes with almost all of your kits. Compact, powerful, but only has one speed. So check this little baby out. I call it a snub nose driver, but pretty sure that's not the name. It's actually called a VCF 850, but check out the difference in size. This little snub nose is ultra compact and actually has more torque than this larger one. So this thing is great for everyday use, getting into tight spaces. And my favorite thing about it is the ability to change the speed and torque. So with the setting on one, it's about half that of the preset drivers. You'll use that for projects that you don't want to drill a screw all the way into a piece of wood. And you can actually hear the difference. So this is your standard. And then if you switch to the second setting, the speeds are about the same. And last but not least, if you have a ton of screws that you're just driving home, put this baby on three, she's ready to rock. So if you are in the market for a new driver, this thing's the only way to go. So this next one, you do not see me use in my videos because I actually use it for tool and blade maintenance. This is an industrial strength, non-toxic tool cleaner and resin remover. A lot of times whenever you think that you have a blade that's going dull, it's actually the resin that's building up on each one of the teeth. I use this stuff for my table saw, my bandsaw, miter saw, really anything that has a blade on it. So instead of taking the blade off of the machine, just make sure to unplug it and spray it down. And while you're at it, you can use it to clean your tabletop. So I let it soak for a bit. I take a rag or a brush and just clean off each one of the teeth. And it's as simple as that. All of the resin's gone. I have a nice clean tabletop and ready to start running some wood. This next one is super, super handy. I really didn't know that it was out there until I got into wood turning. And then after using this stuff for a bit, I'm like, this would be perfect for any type of woodworking. And this is a box of one inch sandpaper rolls in different grits. So let's say that you're working on a project and you need to get into a corner or a tight spot. Just pull out how much ever you think that you'll need. The bottom of the box has a built-in cutter. And you have a nice little strip to use and you can store this back away. What I would do in the past is maybe rip off a piece of a sheet of sandpaper, which that would leave jagged edges all around what's left. Or I would take a sanding disc and just fold it in half. The problem with this is 
Sanding discs are expensive. So if you do much sanding at all, and I know that you do, trust me, pick up a box of these. Don't learn the hard way like I did. And this next one is a silicone glue mat. Okay, so to be honest, I recently just bought one of these and I'm kicking myself. The original reason why I bought it was for epoxy. As you can see by looking at my table, yeah, I needed this a long time ago. And the great thing about this mat is whether you're using epoxy or glue, it will not stick to it once it dries. Before I would just lay everything out of my work surface, catch what I can, and then what was left, I actually had to sand off. You actually see some Bondo spots here from whenever I was removing some epoxy. It actually took the tabletop with it. But with one of these silicone mats, once your glue or epoxy dries, you just peel it off. So save your workspace tabletop and pick you up one of these silicone mats or your table's gonna look like mine. So the silicone mat brings us to our next item, the silicone glue brush. I've seen these things around for years and really thought that they were a waste of money, but I was wrong. So before I bought one of these, anytime that I would put glue on, I would just use my finger. Well, that's the old messy way and over the years, I probably could have bought 50 of these things with the money that I've spent on paper towels. Once you're done using it, you just toss it to the side, let the glue dry. And then the next time that you need to use it or before you put it up, you just pull the old glue out of it. And it's good as new. So as cheap as these things are, there's no excuse to not pick one up. This next one's not really a tool, but it's another thing that I use all of the time to help keep my tables and floors clean. And that is this brown craft paper. I know that you've seen me use it in several videos. I use it for sketching out templates. If I have sawhorses set up, I'll roll this out underneath of my sawhorses. And then if I'm painting on one of my workbenches, and roll it back up when I'm done. So again, save your garage or shop floors from all those little paint or stain splatters and pick up a roll of this stuff. And that brings me to my next one my respirator. Working in the medical field for over 15 years, I realized how important respiratory protection is. For my typical woodworking jobs around the shop, you know that I love my RZ mask. It has crazy awesome filters. If I'm doing something with a lot of aerosol or I want to protect my whole face, let's say like power grinding, then I'm gonna go to this. So you know that there are several different types of respirators. I even make one of these that does not have this full face. But in my opinion, if I'm gonna buy something to protect my lungs, I also want it to protect my eyes. And anything that is in an aerosol form can actually go around your safety glasses unless they're like super snug fitting to your face. Something like this solves that problem. Now also keep in mind that they come with different types of filters. So whenever you go to pick one up, make sure that the filter actually says that it's made for aerosols. And if nothing else, It'll come in super handy if we have a zombie apocalypse. After having to change out several of my hook and loop sanding pads, especially whenever I was starting out because I would use sandpaper until it was almost gone, get the hook and loop pad too hot and actually sand off the little hooks that connect it to the sandpaper. But again, I learned the hard way. These things are super cheap pad saver. So again, these things are dirt cheap. It connects right on top of your existing pad. And if you do happen to wear through your sandpaper, you won't destroy your sanding pad. Another item that I wish that I had used years ago and with the money that I have spent on replacing pads, again, I could have bought my weight in these things. And this next one is actually another one that's not a tool. It is a back, feet, and joint saver. And it's what I'm standing on. And around every one of my main tools, I have this snap together matting. And all that it is is three quarter inch snap together foam. Now I decided to install it around my whole work area. But before this, I used these pads in front of my main equipment or anywhere that I'd be standing for a long period of time. These things are great. And trust me, they will save you a lot of aches and pains in the long run. And this next one I actually did not buy. It was a gift from my kids for Christmas. And it turned out to be one of the most useful ones that I've ever gotten. Now this is intended to just be an adjustable height workstation. You know, it has drawers, things like that. But what I use it for is a multi-tool outfeed table. So if I want to use it for an outfeed for, let's say, the drum sander, I could just push it up to it, lock my wheels, and then just adjust it to where it is level. Now your outfeed is set up. Or let's say that I wanted to use it for an outfeed for my planer. The planer actually sits just a bit lower. So all that I would have to do is spin it around and then just adjust it down to the outfeed of the planer table. And you know how it is. No matter how hard we try, almost every single tool in our shop sits at a little different height. This thing helps to solve that problem. And when you're not using it as an outfeed table, you can use it as it was originally intended for, a workstation or a desk. Did you happen to notice what I was using to set my height? This is a straight edge. And I know what you're thinking. The same thing that I thought and did for years and years. I can just use a straight board for this. Straight boards are almost impossible to find anymore. And unless you're working in a climate controlled space where the humidity is the exact same temperature all year round, that wood's gonna move. Whereas this aluminum milled straight edge will not. These things are awesome for any type of project where you need a perfectly straight edge. What I like about these is it actually came in a set of three. I think it was like two foot, three foot, and four foot. The other thing that I really like is the profile. You have plenty of room to grip while you're marking 
cutting out cut lines, or you can turn it on its side, clamp it to the material, and use it as a tool guide. Tons and tons of uses, and definitely something that I wish I'd bought sooner. And how about this bad boy? This is a thickness gauge. A lot of times these are used in millwork, but they come in super handy around a workshop. So you've probably seen some other creators that use a deck of cards to shim up a cabinet or a door frame so that it's perfect. Same concept, even though that's an awesome idea. I know that I would have cards everywhere or end up starting a poker game while I'm trying to work. So I like to use these. Every one of these super thin blades are just a tiny bit smaller than the previous one, but they are perfect for creating an exact shim size just by adding or taking away one blade. And then whenever you're done, it all folds up to the size of a pocket knife. Something that is definitely not a necessity, but something that comes in super handy whenever you need that exact spacing. So these are just some of the tools that I wish that I had or knew about earlier in my woodworking journey. All of the items that I mentioned will make your life easier in some form or fashion, so as you run across these things, pick them up. Don't be stubborn like me and learn everything the hard way and then kick yourself in the butt years later. And all of that comes down to the old saying of work smarter, not harder. So take a look around your shop and figure out the next thing that you need to accomplish that. Till next time, guys, we'll see ya.